In this short video, we're going to learn how to solve rational equations, that is, equations with fractions. So, rational equations have rational expressions. Now, there are special kind of fractions. They have fractions where the numerator and the denominator are polynomials. And what we're going to do is start by clearing the fractions and then we'll get a new equation that has no fractions, and it will be either a quadratic equation or a linear equation, which we already know how to solve. So to clear the fractions, we have to be able to factor all of the denominators and find the LCD. Then we multiply all of the terms on both sides by the LCD. Now, we have to be careful about multiplying by the LCD. We might not get an equivalent equation. We might, might, we might find ourselves with a solution which is not in the domain of the original rational expressions, in which case we have to reject that solution. It can't be a solution to the equation. So we, what we do is check that any solution we find belongs to the domain. So let's start with a, an example, 12 over y plus y over y minus 3 equals 7. There's nothing to factor here. We can see what the uh, LCD is. And so we want to go through this systematically. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to determine the domain, which means that we're going to find what values of the variable cannot be solutions. That means any value which would give us a zero in the denominator. Then we'll calculate the least common denominator, the LCD. Use that to clear the fractions, which means we'll get a new equation with no fractions, and we'll use that uh, to a uh, new equation. We'll solve that, and whatever solution we get out from that new equation, we'll have to check to make sure it's back in the domain. So that's why we start with the domain. So our domain for this equation is y cannot be 0 and y cannot be 3. The LCD, I only have two denominators. They can't be factored, and so the LCD is their product, y times y minus 3. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply each term by y times y minus 3, including the 7, even though it's not written as a fraction. I'm still going to multiply it because it's part of the equation. I have to multiply both sides by the same number. Now I'm going to rewrite these fractions so that I can see the forms of 1. So I have a y over a y, and then in the second term, a y minus 3 over y minus 3. On the right-hand side, I just use the distributive property. So taking out those forms of 1, I'm left with 12 times y minus 3 plus y squared equals 7y squared minus 21y. Now, I'm not done yet, so I'll have to continue on the next slide. So we left off with 12 parentheses y minus 3 plus y squared equals 7y squared minus 21. So this is a quadratic equation, so I'm going to make one side equal to 0, and let's see if I can factor it. So first I'll need to remove these parentheses. Then I'll do some balancing. I'll subtract 12y. I'll add 36 and subtract y squared from each side, giving me 0 is 6y squared minus 33y plus 36. Those are just some big numbers. They look a little intimidating. But then you can see that we have a common factor of 3. And now I'm working with much smaller numbers. So to factor 2y squared minus 11y plus 12, 
I'll need two numbers that multiply to make 24 and add to make negative 11. Those numbers would be negative 8 and negative 3. So the negative 11y is going to be written as negative 8y and then negative 3y. And I'll use factoring by grouping to get the final factorization 3 times the binomial 2y minus 3 times y minus 4 equals 0. And that's going to give me two solutions, y equals 3 halves and y equals 4. Now both of those are in the domain, so nothing gets rejected. So here's a variation. Now I have uh, y over y plus 3, and that equals 1. So the same solution steps. My domain is uh, y can't be 0 and y can't be negative 3. And my LCD is the product y times y plus 3. So let's go ahead and multiply every term by y times y plus 3. Uh, when I have fractions, I'll be writing them so I can see the form of, of 1. Uh, on the right-hand side, I just use the distributive property. Take out those forms of 1. Remove the parentheses. Uh, well, I could have done that first, but I guess I observed that both sides have just one y squared. So if I subtract y squared from each side, I get an equation with no y squared. It's a linear equation. And in fact, I also use the distributive property here, removing the parentheses to get 12y plus 36. So let's go ahead and solve that. We'll just go ahead and get uh, the variables on one side. And this is one exception. Normally, I do not want to get a uh, negative coefficient on the y. But the 36 is already here. And I'm going to save some work if I just subtract 12y from each side. And then divide both sides by negative 9 to get y equals negative 4, which is in the domain. So I don't have to reject that. So in our last example, I have to do some factoring first before I can identify the domain and the LCD. So after I factor m squared minus 1 as m plus 1 times m minus 1, I see that the domain is that m cannot equal 1 and it cannot equal negative 1. My LCD is m plus 1 times m minus 1. So I'll go ahead and multiply each term by that LCD. And then look for my forms of 1. And after I take those out, uh, now I've got an equation with no fractions. And in fact, there's no squared term, so it's just a linear equation. And let me go ahead and remove the parentheses, collect the like term and then solve for m. So I'll add 3 to each side, and then divide by 9. That gives me m equals 1. But that's a problem, because 1 is not in the domain. So I'm going to have to reject that, which means that our solution set is empty.